Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. Today we're going to be talking to you about the concept of imprinting. Now, imprinting is, in short, the methylation, the specific methylation of genes, either in your paternal chromosome or your maternal chromosome. Okay, so keep in mind, remember that, you know, each person has two copies uh, of a, any chromosome and one of them is going to be from your dad which is your paternal and one of them is going to be from your mom which is your maternal so let's just um hypothetically talk about your paternal gene and let's just talk about gene a okay so now both your maternal and your paternal since they're homologous chromosomes they're going to both code for a certain gene a and your paternal is going to make that protein uh product which is going to be your protein a Okay, but now what happens in imprinting is that this maternal gene A is actually going to be silenced. It's going to be methylated. Okay, and as a result of that methylation, it would be unable to produce a protein A. And um, this is actually a normal process. Imprinting happens um, in normal people, but that, that's just an example of imprinting. Um, now, maybe your maternal um, can code for a certain gene B that your paternal also codes for, but that paternal one is going to be actually methylated and only your maternal um, chromosome is actually going to produce that protein B, okay? What I wanted to talk to you guys in particular about is this concept of imprinting an example of that. And a common example used is going to be uh, chromosome 15, okay? And chromosome 15 um, has these genes that code for this uh, one protein called SNRP um, N gene, your SNRP N protein, uh, and it also codes for your UBE3A gene, your UB3A gene, okay? Um, now, because of imprinting, what happens is that only your paternal uh, chromosome actually expresses that SNRP N gene, and only your maternal chromosome expresses that UB3A gene. So what happens in this paternal gene uh, chromosome is that um, it's going to have uh, methylation of your UB3A uh, gene, okay? And the same with your uh, maternal, you're going to have methylation of your SNRP N gene. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So now we're going to talk about uh, these conditions. So there's going to be a condition called Prader-Willi syndrome. You guys may, may have heard of it. Um, and the converse is going to be your Angelman syndrome, okay? So what happens uh, here is for Prader-Willi, think about it as a paternal um, uh, defect, okay? So it's going to be a paternal defect that results in a non-functional, um, non-functional SNRPN gene, uh, protein, okay? So uh, basically what you're doing now is a person with um, Prader-Willi syndrome is going to only produce uh, your UB3A protein and no SNRPN gene, okay? As you and as you can imagine, those can lead to a lot of problems. So the exact same thing happens for Angelman syndrome. Think about it as a maternal defect. So you have a, um, it's going to be a maternal defect in your UB3A. Um, so that's going to be non-functional uh, UB3A which means that you're only going to be producing your SNRPN from your paternal side, from your paternal chromosome, okay? So how, how does this happen? You might, you might be asking, how does Prader-Willi syndrome happen? And there's going to be two causes, okay? Two potential causes. One of them is going to be a uh, deletion on chromosome 15. Um, that's going to lead to uh, uh, that non-expression of your uh, SNRP. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry about that. That took a little bit of time. And then, or it could be uh, uh, a meiosis defect where basically you're going to only have uh, your maternal chromosome. You're going to have two copies of your maternal chromosome. Um, two copies and no copies of your paternal chromosome. So that basically just results from, um, uh, you know, non-disjunction. And you're basically just going to have two copies uh, from mom, okay? Uh, so either way, uh, you're going to have no SNRPN, SNRPN uh, protein being made. So for your maternal, um, basically this is going to be either that same two causes so it's either going to be a uh, deletion on chromosome 15 but this time it's going to be in your oob 3a um, uh, a gene which results in a defective uh, oob 3a protein or you're going to have non-disjunction okay that's going to uh, lead to uh, no copies of your maternal um, oop 3 a and lead to only uh, your copies for your paternal. Okay, so um, you're only going to have uh, two copies of your uh, SNRP um, in protein. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to uh, go over some tests that you can do. Basically, um, there's going to be two tests that you can do. Um, they're both going to involve your DNA. And the first one is actually going to be, um, you know, like a southern blot, um, a, a fish assay. Okay, so that's going to be uh, immunohistochemistry, immunohistochemistry. Uh, and it's looking at a specific, that specific um, uh, SNRPN and your OOB 3A, okay? Or you can look at um, this assay called CGH, okay? And that's going to look at your whole chromosome. And what that does and what that's helpful for is that you can be able to see uh, uh, certain methylation um, of your of certain genes. Um, or you can uh, just look at the morphology of the general chromosome. You can see whether or not there's going to be deletions, insertions, for example, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is walk you guys through uh, uh, your immunohistochemistry here, your fish assay, all right? So you're basically going to extract DNA and you're going to have these uh, restriction enzymes, okay? And these restriction enzymes are going to be those scissors that you see. They basically cut... Um, uh, non-methylated DNA okay so then um, as you cut non-methylated DNA that's going to result in a smaller DNA fragments so as you can see here um, your paternal is going to be once again that SNRPN protein and your maternal is going to be once again that OOB um, 3A protein okay so uh, as you can see here, the OOP3A is going to be slightly larger than your paternal. And uh, here you can see your normal, uh, your normal controls. And then you, you see somebody with Angelman syndrome and somebody with um, PWS, okay? So what you, can, what you can appreciate here is that you, um, people with Angelman syndrome have that problem with their maternal DNA, right? So you can see that they don't produce that OOP3A and then people with uh, PWS is going to lack that paternal um, uh, uh, chromosomal function of producing that SNRPN, okay? So that's why you see these bands and that's how you can use these assays to determine whether or not somebody has these, um, to confirm whether or not somebody has uh, this condition when they show certain symptoms uh, that are indicative of these, of these conditions. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful.